So good evening, Monday night, Hodge Close Quarry, fantastic, take a look down there, take a listen down there. Classical music, such a, an amazing place, got some fantastic photographs from here, which I'll uh, probably show you now, but let's just get up to this next bit, are we going to get a gap in the trees, yeah there you go. So I don't know what's going on down there, but somebody's having a good time by the sounds of it, and, uh, and rightly so. So this evening, I want to come and maybe see if I can get a little bit of the way up home fell. Um, not probably thinking I'm going to get up to the summit, but I just want to get up high enough. Excuse me a minute while I do that. I'm going to see if I can get up high enough to get a view of the Langdale Pikes from uh, a good vantage point there because I think it could be a good sunset tonight. There's plenty of cloud. Um, I'm going to have to probably get a move on best I can because it's, uh, it's looking like it's coming, setting down now. You can, uh, yeah, I've brought another long lens today so I know I keep making excuses about not having a long lens and the reason I don't have them is because they're so heavy for my camera but I've brought one tonight and I'm going to see what I can get from it because in my last video from uh, Derwent Water there I'm really pleased with the results what come out of them so I've got a, got a different lens tonight but I'm hoping I can get some some more interesting shots from uh, from the long telephoto side of things with my camera because it's something I've not really done much of in recent times so we'll see what tonight brings so I'll catch up with you in a bit and uh, we'll see how it works out there you go mate last little bit now before my viewpoint and the weather is awesome it's uh, it's looking fantastic over there um, so let me just come around this corner in a sec and we'll see how it looks oh it hurts Here we go, here we go. Oh, look at that. Have you any, ever seen anything like that? Totally awesome. I need to get on that rock. So I need to go up here. straight up the middle oh 
right let's get set up it's always a race against time let's get that off right I saw 100 lens cap off as Mick Dundee once said first shot in the bag let's get it done there we go I'm going to take three exposures for this foreground mid ground and highlight we'll see what that gives me and there we go Right, now I'm going to actually compose one, because that's probably shocking. Too high up there. This foreground, the foreground around here is absolutely fantastic. You've got rocks protruding out of the ground, and you've got heather, and you've got these little trees growing, which I really need to get that in the foreground to make that image. So let's go for that. Take one for the highlights. One for the mid-ground. Awesome. And a brighter shot there. It excites me photography like this really good really that is that is what it's all about for me right I'm going to change my focus point to the heather just on that rock hyperfocal distance about two meters so I can hopefully get the the whole scene in there right now what I need to do stop messing about with that I'm gonna turn it off I'm gonna swap it for this thing and give it its first landscape shoot so There we go, lens cap off. Right, now, my God, look at that. Focus to infinity. Just pull it back a little bit. There we go, let's see what happens with that. You don't want it to be blurred after carrying it all up here, would it? so hopefully it won't be. Tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to move my ISO to 400 so I can get a longer, a longer shorter time, 2 50th of a second now, because you really don't want it to be blurred after all the effort you've gone to to get to it. Okay, now... I'm going to go for the I'm going to go for the land uh, the uh, portrait orientation. There we go. Brilliant. It's so good to be using a long lens after after all this time of not having one. So these are these are Hasselblad V lenses what I picked up off uh, picked them up off eBay and uh, yeah they're great got my little adapter there to adapt it to the X1D and it works it works a treat so what I'm what I'm doing is I'm just picking out little spots of light 
on these distant fells. No reason for doing it really, just while the light's here I'm going to I'm going to try and capture it because uh, it soon goes as we know and when it's gone that's the end of it so just going to pick out a few of these long scenes which I've really missed shooting. Get that pushed deep into the ground so it's going to be nice and firm hopefully. Right what I'm going to also do is I'm going to get out my peak finder app which we used in the last video so I can determine what all these fells are around us so here we go let's try and get let me find my reference which will be there won't it will it no that's there there we go, lower man, so there's Helvellyn, just bugger off, there's Helvellyn just below or above Thirlmere where we was the other week, Hart Crag, Duff Crag, High Pike, Little High Crag, Low Pike, Red Screes, Ivy Crag, that's what I've just shot there then, High Street, Mardale, Illbell, Frostwick, Illbell, Baystones, Wandsfell Pike, wicked, right let's come back round to here, there it is look, the Langdale Pikes. Fantastic. What have we got round here? Long top, south top, Weatherlum, there we go, that was in the uh, townhouse video, wasn't it? And then you'll have Homefell just behind me there. What, what an app that is. Fantastic. What can we see anything over there? Ingleborough, there you go. Hello the Yorkshire Dales yeah so Ill Bell is the pointy one let's uh, zoom in a bit there yeah fantastic good right we know what's what let's get back to taking pictures what a brilliant app that is okay so some more lights coming over here now. Look at that thing. Truly fantastic. Yeah. So a bit like what I said in last week's video where you're faced with such a wide vista you know it's easy just to pull out your wide angle lens and shoot the whole thing but i think picking out little bits like this is is really quite rewarding now if i if i turn to i'll be able to get that little tree on the bottom left bottom right corner there look I'll zoom into it yeah let's go for that give it some scale let's see if it's sharp appears to be yeah fantastic might just recompose that a little bit and put the tree more towards the balance the land below the tree and the sky above the mountain that might look a little bit better there we go oh that's awesome fantastic lens fantastic right back to the Langdales quickly then see if we can get it with the with the quarry in the foreground that'll be nice with Harrison stickle and uh, Pico stickle above there we go it's all very rushed isn't it but when you're up against the light that's what you've got to do I'm afraid going to back that off a tiny bit so I'll make sure I get the sky right so what I'm going to do when I've finished with my little toy there I'm going to get out my 20 my 30 mil which is a 24 mil equivalent and I'm going to take in fact I'm going to do that now because I think probably the no I'm going to take one more I'm going to take it just over there
of these silver birch on top of the the fell there. I'm going to take this and then I'll put that lens away. Yeah, I'll see if I can make something of that. Oh, more light coming over there now, look at that. I can't not shoot that. What a faff. Oh, it's not, it's too long. Said no man ever. There we go. Portrait orientation will give me more aspect ratio. I think that'll work out right now. I'm going to have to turn that off because I'm getting carried away. And at 42 years old, you've got to let something carry you away, haven't you? I'm going to get out my wide angle and I'm going to try and craft an image with this early bloom of heather in the foreground. There we go. So I'll put that back in there. I'm going to get my filters out. There we go. Polarizer. And I'm probably going to need a 0.9 graduated filter. So I'm going to go for a hard grad for this one which is the one I used in last week's video over Derwent water let's give that a quick wipe down so I'm setting up my filters without even looking at the scene because I think experience is telling me that's what I'm going to need so I'm going to go for that come on portrait orientation. I'm going to lower myself down a bit. Gets nice and stable and then I can use my centre column to lift me up if I need any more height. Let's get down here. Uh, we're okay. Right, F27. So what I'm going to do is I know I've got about two metres from a hyperfocal distance. So here we go, drop your filter in. 0.7 of a second, I don't know if I need to hold that so tight. Look at that, fantastic. Oh yes, I absolutely love shots like that. It's quite savage that, um, That graduated filter, how it uh, suddenly finishes, but then you know it's doing what the name suggests, isn't it? A hard grad. Right, how can I improve upon this? Let's uh, have a look, see if I can move you round to give you a different view instead of seeing the same thing all the time. I need a, a cameraman, don't I? Cameraman or camera woman. Right, just double tap on the screen, zooms me into 100%, and then I'm checking my depth of field. See, this is why I like the tilt shift lens, because you can then use the uh, tilt feature and you can, you can get a much better plane of focus for your... Um, Sorry, plane of depth of field. And it, situations like this, it's absolutely essential. So again, zooming into the the foreground there, trying to set my focus accurately. Oh, falling over. Portrait orientation now. Uh, landscape, sorry. I don't think it'll work as nicely though. I. I I'm a real lover of portrait style images. OK, 
careful with my positioning my grad there. So I'm going to go for a 0.9 soft grad. Just want to try and eliminate that really hard um, edge on on the fells what I've got it positioned so let's see yeah that's okay okay back it off a little bit there we go see how that comes out okay very dark on the foreground but I will be able to rescue that I'll take another one just in case. You've got to bracket these shots sometimes. It doesn't matter how much dynamic range you've got. It's always best to be safe. Get it in the in the thing. Right, what else can I do here? Just take it in for a minute because it is truly lovely. It's, um, it's a beautiful evening. And uh, well worth the effort in getting up here. It's, uh, it is hard work. But when you've got a reward like this waiting for you at the top with this... You know, you've seen how I've composed this. It's literally just walked up here, found something, plonked my camera down and gone for it. And uh, you could spend a long time up here looking for all these different little compositions. I mean, I, I've explored not this top of this. I've explored further that way. And there's a few images in my book, Capture Lakeland Volume 2, which I'll put up on screen for you now. And they were taken in sort of late autumn time when the heather had died back a little bit, obviously. We've got heather all around here now, but it's only just coming out. So that'll be interesting when it does fully come out. A uh, nice bit of purple to the foreground. These roots as well, which are, you should be able to hopefully see that from your angle there. These white roots, they're, they're looking fantastic. And I think uh, you can get a few of those composed as well. That, that could add for a nice bit of interest in the foreground. Um, so what, I've, what attracted me to this scene was obviously we've got this new growth coming through here which uh, is adding a nice green pop to that foreground we've got this big rock here um, and in in a few more weeks this will be pink and purple with all the heather so this is definitely a spot to come back to um, this specific shot as well because ev everything about landscape photography is in this what i love is is in that scene there You've got intricate detail in the foreground, which I absolutely love. So you can hopefully, I, I want this image to feel like you can touch these these um, little flowers here. I want I want this image to feel like you can just touch those little things, those little flowers. I want the detail to be on the um, the green little sapling or whatever it is in the foreground, and then all the way through to the the texture of the rock, and then leading us through to that beautiful sky there above the Langdale Pikes. Now to me this is as good as landscape photography ever gets the, the and i know i want to i want to say crafting of this image but i've made this look so hash dash that it's it's ridiculous you know you're probably watching this thinking you don't know what you're doing but you know i keep saying all the practice you need to do so that when you're in this moment with the right light and the right conditions you can act straight away and you don't have to you know think what am i doing panicking with settings and things you just set up and you shoot it now what what you what i really should do is get up here bring a little deck chair or something and just come up here like an hour or two hours before sunset and just sit and watch this because it's all always the case with me you know summer is a nightmare because you know it's it's so late on in the day and you've got kids and you've got tea and all that thing and you know by the time you've done it you think oh i could go to bed now but you've got to really make yourself get out and uh, I need to I need to be better at this, at, at spending more time outside instead of just quick drive, quick walk, take the shot, go home because it's over too soon. You know, I could literally spend all day up here. Anyway, um, I'm going to just shut up for a bit because I'm getting carried away. And I, I, I need to spend some time trying to find something else. But w what I'm looking for really what I'm looking for is, is a rock, some heather, and, a, and a, some kind of growth or, you know, like a plant or something to give it a bit of extra. See, this isn't too bad from up here. Let me just take a, 
I'll take a quick shot from up here with the phone so you can see there you go, you see you've got all these ferns and bracken down here so that they're really illuminous green see more of these little plants growing on here that's a bit of an awkward position that though but you know I've stumbled across a really good spot there it's got it's got everything I want in a photograph and I'm just hoping that these have these pictures are gonna come out well because if they haven't I'm gonna look a bit daft aren't I well looked after anyway whatever happens mate let's have a look down here see there's there's just a bank of green ferns even behind you there you know look down there but you, you, you haven't got the view from there or have you no you, I don't think you would have so interesting the ferns are just growing on this bank right what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna free the tri free the camera of the tripod and I'm going to use. I'm going to just walk around and see if I can pick out those little white roots there. Is that going to work? Don't think it is. There's some more here. Will this work? No, I don't think. I don't think it will. But I might. I might try that one. I might try that because something there could be something there let's get the old uh, leg extensions out there we go crawling about this is what it's all about there we go right No wind, that'll do us. Yeah, a bit of different textures, isn't there? I'm not getting that white branching. I think I need to be a bit a bit closer down. There we go. Let's have a look at that one. Right, you see my filter's misplaced there because the, the fells are just too dark. I need to lift it up a tiny bit, look. Let's go for that one again. It needs something there, doesn't it, in the bottom left corner. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, the colours are brilliant though, the colours are awesome. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move to that next little rocky bit because there's more purple, there's purple heather there and there's some uh, nice looking rock as well. So let's make our way down there. Okay, so I've just moved down to this next little section. What's good about this is the this um this rock in the foreground is is as tall as me probably or maybe not quite so so i need to be lift myself up a bit there will be no bending down for this one and i should be able to maintain a better a better level of sharpness in my foreground i would imagine so again just position my filter there Let's go for that. It's the, we're losing the light now. It's just a far, faint pink glow above uh, the fells there now. That's totally overexposed. What's going on with that? All right, let me drop that back a bit. Take one for the sky. There we go. Merge them together. See how that looks. Got some contrails coming across there now. It's maybe going to spoil that. Let's go for one in this orientation in landscape and then I can probably make a panoramic about out of this it's gonna drop my aperture down to say f22 again position my filter there expose for the sky on the first one 
there we go that's very dark on the foreground but I should be able to lift that up with a simple little turn and there we go join them together I'm going to crop that into three to one and see how that looks um, yeah good all right well, let's just have a little look up here oh look at this oh my god that's awesome it's like you're flying come on I'll take you up there and you can have a look for yourself this is what it's all about right let's just have it let's just take this in look at that absolutely fantastic you're looking at that and it's 180 degrees of land below you and interest a green belt absolutely fantastic that look at that that is as good as it gets just a feeling of freedom look at that that is freedom right there open space you just cannot beat it can you if you know this area home fell it's quite popular with photographers and it was made popular in my eyes by Colin Bell who's one of the best landscape photographers of his generation in my eyes it's just a shame he's mega successful at other things so he doesn't totally focus 100% on landscape photography but he's, uh, he's a bit of a genius with his camera and he produced a fantastic book called Healing his book sensational pictures down there you just wouldn't believe it you know he's Colin's got a massive advantage other than being like six foot seven or six foot six or whatever he is he gets up very early and he comes down here and he gets all the mist and it's just another world when it's covered in mist I just struggle to to be able to do that but uh, it's you know it's definitely something to aim for but yeah check out Colin Bell uh, Colin Bell dot photography is his website um, it's not often I give people a shout out but that guy deserves one he's, he's a good fella he's a good friend of mine as well um, but yeah let's uh, let's just take this view in for a minute I'm going to wrap it up there I think it's uh, I'm going to just spend another 20 minutes half an hour just taking all this in and I don't want to have to be thinking about anything at all so there we go I've enjoyed uh, tonight I hope you've enjoyed it too I'll try and cobble all this together so it makes a bit of sense but yeah fantastic that's what it's all about right well thanks for watching thanks for your engagement your comments your likes your shares subscribe if you aren't doing already lots more content coming soon hopefully and I'll uh, catch you again on the next video. All the best for now. Bye-bye.